Praise God. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, folks, I don't know if you're watching what's going on in the news, what they're talking about with the stock market, but I do believe that this is just the beginning. I believe that this downfall of the stock market is just a marking of the beginning of the end. Uh, I believe that this country is in decline and headed for disaster. And I don't see anything that's going to turn it around. You say, oh, well, Brother Joseph, prayer will turn it around. Repentance will turn it around. It seems to me that the people are hardening their heart. And if you look this up in the original Greek, you'll find that this word hardness of heart has to do with becoming stupid, literally becoming stupid. And we're finding that more and more in this day and age are stupid, are becoming so stupid, so foolish. And it's amazing. Even people in, in you know, official pro- professions like doctors and lawyers and uh, judges and even the President of the United States, so stupid, making stupid decisions. And, you know, even Jesus used that word stupid when he said, O oh, fools, slow of heart to believe all that the prophets had said. You look up that word fools, it means stupid. Now, you may not be on the same page with me when I say that most today are in that direction of becoming very stupid. And maybe this offends you, but Jesus was not afraid to tell some folks they were stupid. And uh, I think we're in the hour where people need to recognize just how far we have gone into darkness to see just how messed up people are getting. Some of the decisions, some of the judgments that are being made in the United States of America today are some of the most ludicrous, foolish, stupid, uh, ignorant uh, decisions, uh, just total ignorance, just Ignore the Constitution, just ignore the law, and that is what ignorance is. You have to ignore something to be ignorant. I mean, that's why the word ignore is in the word ignorance. And so, when you have an ignorant president, he has to ignore what's already there. He has to ignore the Bill of Rights. He has to ignore the Constitution. He has to ignore uh, Congress. He has to ignore... Uh, the law for him to do the things that he's doing today. And this president, this dictator, I should say, that's in the White House, that doesn't even consult with his own, uh, with, he doesn't even consult with his own party, never mind his own people, as far as the the people of the United States, the citizens of the United States. He, he doesn't even talk to the citizens. He's supposed to be working for us. Did you hear what I said? Obama is supposed to be a servant, a public servant of the people. And when he starts making decisions that have nothing to do with the people uh, being a, in agreement with him, Congress not agreeing, nobody's agreeing, And yet, he's still doing what he wants to do. That's a dictatorship. And it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. So what's going on in the volatility volatility, uh, and and the change that we're seeing in the stock market? Well, without questions, there's decisions being made that are wrong wrong decisions. Whenever you have wrong decisions being made... You have foolishness, you have stupidity going on. You're going to see uh, this show up in the physical realm. You're going to see it. It's going to happen. 
just like the housing bubble. Eventually, it burst. And that's what we're going to see very soon. You can only do quantitative easing so long, and eventually it's going to collapse. Eventually, it's not going to work. And that's what they're doing. They just keep on doing this. They keep on doing this. I think we're in uh, QE 4 or 5 now. It's crazy. They just keep on doing it, keep on doing it. Well, eventually, it's going to collapse, and that's what we're seeing. And I believe the stock market is actually in a free fall. I do. I believe that. I believe it's in a free fall. I don't, I don't think it's going to uh, balance back out. I don't think we're going to see it happen. I think it's in an actual free fall right now. We have people that are in the higher ranks of the banks that are committing suicide right now. Why are they committing suicide at the top? Well, listen, folks, if they're committing suicide at the top, this thing's coming down. And eventually, it's coming down on the people. That's right. The The depression has nothing on us, what, what's coming. So you better not think that your money is safe in a bank because it's not safe. You must understand that only those who put their trust in the Lord are going to be delivered in this hour. Only those that trust in the Lord are going to be safe. Every single person today that's putting their trust in the stock market, putting their trust in man, is in trouble. That's why Jesus said you can't serve God in mammon too. You can't serve both. You've got to make up your mind who you're going to serve. And if you're worried about your money and worried about uh, if your money's safe, then you're not putting your trust in the Lord. Because eventually they're going to replace, all money is going to be replaced with a mark. The mark of the beast. And without question, the mark of the beast is the beast is a system. It's going to be a world global system. And it'll be headed up by the United Nations, will be the world government. And everyone that does not receive that mark of servitude to the government of the global government will be beheaded, the scripture says. Everyone that will not willingly receive that mark, nobody will be forced to receive that mark, but yet the Bible says that he will cause them to receive the mark. In other words, there are going to be things put in place where people will be forced to receive the mark. And that's what we're going to see, uh, those that are left behind. I don't plan on being here. I plan on getting out of here. Jesus said, watch and pray that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things and stand before the Son of Man. So I don't plan on being here when the mark of the beast is issued out. But if you think you have to be here, well then understand if you receive that mark, you're going to damn your soul forever. Remember, you don't receive that mark because you're forced to. You receive that mark because you choose to. This mark of the beast is a mark of servitude, which means you serve the beast, which means you worship the beast, which means you're submitted to the beast. This will not be a mark that's issued uh, against your will. This is a mark that people are willingly going to take to show their homage, to show their uh, veneration, to show their uh, loyalty to the new world order, to show their uh, loyalty to the, uh, to the beast and to the kingdom of the beast. This is not something that's going to be forced upon people. I'm going to continue to tell you this because you need to understand that the mark of the beast is not something that's going to be forced upon people. If it was, then the Lord would not be justified in those people ending in hell. Because if you're forced to do something you have no you know, have no control over, then how can the Lord justify uh, in, in you being sent to hell? He can't. So it has to be something that you have to willingly accept. And I'm watching a generation today that is being readied, that's being prepared, that's being programmed to accept the mark of the beast. And whether it's, it's a little chip or what it, it's a mark, whatever it you know, a, a mark on the skin. It doesn't really matter because it comes down to putting your trust in the beast system and the government, the global government, a one world government versus putting your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Folks, the Lord has never, ever, ever failed me. Everything I've ever had need of, the Lord has provided. 
I have never gone without. I have never had a, a time in my life when I put my trust in the Lord that I didn't have a roof over my head, that I didn't have uh, my bills paid. That Listen, God is faithful if we'll put our trust in Him. The Lord will not fail us. Amen? The Lord won't fail us. We'll fail Him if we don't put our trust in Him, but the Lord won't fail us. He is faithful. He is true. Amen. The Lord is faithful and He is true. And He is going to have a people that are going to willingly submit to His Lordship. They're going to submit to Him as Lord of their life. And there will be those that will bow their knee against their will. They won't want to bow their knee, but they'll be forced to bow their knee. And they'll be forced to confess with their tongues that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. But there's some that are going to willingly bow down to him. And he is their Lord. He is their king. Now, Jesus Christ has a kingdom. Whether you understand that or not, whether you believe it or not, uh, Jesus said you must, must be born again to see it. You can't even see the kingdom of God until you've been born again. So don't expect to see God's kingdom if you've never been born again. You've got to be born again to see the kingdom of God. Never mind, enter the kingdom of God. You must be born again. And I know that I'm speaking to people out there that have never been born again. You've, you think, oh, well, I've accepted Jesus as my Savior. Yes, but you've never been born again. You've never had that regeneration of your spirit. You've never had that conversion. You've never had that experience. And yet you call yourself a Christian. You say you love Jesus, but you've never been born again by the Spirit of God. Listen, friend. You must be born again to see, to understand and see the kingdom of God. You cannot go into God's kingdom until you've been regenerated by the Spirit of God. Now, this is not a one-time thing. This is not a one-time thing. Peter said, being born again. And Jesus said, these are they that followed, followed me in the regeneration. See, you're not born again when you get saved. You get life in you and you begin. That you start as a, a, a little infant, a little baby, uh, a little embryo, so to speak, spiritually, in the womb of the church. But there comes a time when you uh, come to the full place of where you're going to be birthed. And that's where we see in the book of Revelation in chapter 12, uh, where the scripture says the woman brought forth the man child who is to rule all nations with a rod of iron. This is a uh, believer that is in the body of Christ, in the church that is being birthed out, that has come to full age to be birthed into the kingdom of God. Listen, you cannot be fully born again from this world to that world just by getting saved just by accepting Jesus as your Savior. It's a process. That's why Jesus said, follow me in the regeneration. That's why Peter said, being born again, not of, incorrupt, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible seed, which is the Word of God. Hallelujah. We're being regenerated by the power of the Holy Ghost, and we're one day going to be birthed out of the church and into the kingdom of God, leaving this world, praise God, and be with Jesus forever. Birthed out of this world and birthed into that world. Hallelujah. Leaving this world and birthed into that kingdom. Oh, hallelujah. Thank God it's real. I thank the Lord that the day that the regeneration began. I thank God when He began to regenerate my spirit. My spirit began to come alive. My soul was alive and in. in and, but it's just the beginning, folks. It's just the beginning. Then we go on to be children, and then we go on to be sons, and we go on to be full age. You don't get it all at the beginning. So many today think they get it all. They get everything. Get it all. No, you don't get it all when you get saved. You just start. That's just the beginning. Just as the Scripture says that to fear God is the beginning of wisdom. It's just the beginning. Don't stay there. Don't stop there. 
Listen, to have the fear of God is just the beginning. We need to move on from the fear of God and get to know God in His love. Don't stay in that place where you're afraid and terrified of God. That's just the beginning. That's just to get your attention. Let's move on and to know the love of God, hallelujah, which surpasses all knowledge. Let's go on to know the love of God. Like Paul said, I'm persuaded that nothing should separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus, hallelujah. Remember, the fear of God is just the beginning of wisdom. It's just the beginning And we have so many today that don't even have even the beginning. They haven't even started yet because they have no fear of God. Listen, if you don't fear God, you haven't even started yet. That fear of God is that word phobia. It's the word terror. That's right. You must know the fear of God first before you'll ever know God's love. You must know His terror You must know that God is a consuming fire. Listen, the more you understand that God is a terror, the more you understand that God is to be feared, then you will run to His grace. Then you will run to His mercy. Then you will run to Him for salvation. Why would you run to Him for salvation if you wasn't afraid of Him? If you wasn't afraid of His judgment? If you wasn't afraid of His wrath? If he was not afraid of of what he could possibly do to you. Jesus said, don't fear him who can destroy your body and then afterwards can't do anything. He said, fear him who can destroy your body and soul in hell. That's who we're supposed to fear. Not supposed to be afraid of man. Not supposed to be afraid of the devil. We should be fearing God. Amen. There should be a terror. And knowing the terror of the Lord, the Bible says, we persuade men. Oh, Brother Joseph, you shouldn't talk like that. God's not a a terror. God's not uh, terrorizing anybody. Listen, we're talking right now about the stock market in a free fall. There's some folks that have terror on their faces. We can see fear coming into their eyes. We can see people getting nervous. We can see people getting shooken up. Why? Because they put all their trust in money. Listen, we need to put our trust in God. Amen. The Lord will deliver us. But you've got to first know the fear of God, brothers and sisters. That's just the beginning of wisdom. We've got to move on. Once we know the fear of God, once we believe that God means what He says, then we move on, praise God, into the love of God, to know His love, to know that we're not appointed unto wrath, but unto salvation. But you got to start with the terror of the Lord. you got to start with the fear of the Lord. You say, well, Brother Joseph, you sound like you're just being redundant. No, I'm trying to emphasize to us, we must know the law of God first before we can know the grace of God. This idea today, get rid of the law and just everybody love one another. No, we've got to know the terror of the Lord. We've got to know that God is a holy God. He's holy. God's holy. He's pure. He's righteous. And He's revealing Himself in this hour in His holiness. And not everyone in this hour is going to be accepted of Him. Many are going to be left behind. The Lord is spewing out the lukewarm because they're not ready, because they don't know the love of God, because they don't know God's great love. You can't know God's great love until you know God's anger, till you know God's wrath, until you know God. Folks, listen, we must understand our God is a consuming fire. We need a revelation of the God that we read about in the Bible and not the one we have in the imaginations of our mind. Do you have a revelation of the God that came down upon the mount? And we read about in the Old Testament, he came down and the mount was burning with fire and smoke. Do we know him? The God, hallelujah, that opened up the ground and they fell headlong into hell. The one that slew thousands and thousands and thousands of people. The one that came down and and, and glorified himself and, and parted the Red Sea and all of Pharaoh and his uh 
horses and all his soldiers went down into the Red Sea, drowned in the Red Sea. He's the same today. He is God. He is God. He is to be feared. He is to be feared. Amen. I want to know him. Not just this idea that, oh, God loves me and he understands. No, I want to know him, friend. I hope you desire to know him. I want to know him in his fullness. I want to know him. I want to know first his, I want to know him first in the terror. I want to know first, firsthand. Listen, when you know God in his terror, you'll never be afraid of anything else ever again. Once you know the terror of the Lord, you'll never fear the devil. You'll never fear man. You'll never fear anything ever again because there's no terror. There's no fear greater than God's fear. There is nothing greater than God's fear. But we don't stay there. We move on from the fear of the Lord and to the love of God. Hallelujah. And we become secure in the love of God. I hope that somebody today that's listening understands that you've got to move on beyond the fear of the Lord. You've got to move. That doesn't mean you you lose the fear of God. That just simply means you move on with the fear of God. You move towards the love of God. And guess what happens when you move into the love of God? Perfect love casteth out fear. You come to this place like Paul where you no longer are terrified by God. Now you come into this place to know the love of God. And you don't want to leave there. You don't want to leave the love of God once you're there. Because you become secure in His love. You are accepted in Him. He accepts you. And once you're accepted in the Beloved, and once you have peace with God, why would you ever want to leave that place? Listen, the terror of the Lord, the fear of God is just to get our attention, folks. It's just to wake us up. It's just to get us alert. It's just to get us to the place where we'll run to His grace, where we'll run to His mercy, where we'll run to His love. Hallelujah. You need, I need, we all need to be running into into the Lord in this hour. A lot of folks are going to begin running. There's a lot of running that's getting ready to take place. As we see the stock market right now in a free fall, as we see these things coming upon the earth, there's going to be a lot of running. But how many are going to run into Jesus? How many are going to be running into the Lord? How many are going to run into the Lord as a a place where you're safe? The righteous run into the Lord and they're safe. Hallelujah. We need to run. I had the Lord actually say that to me. He said, run into me. He said, run to me. I had him say that to me one day, a, a few, about a year ago, I guess it's been now. Run to me. Run to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Knowing the terror of the Lord We persuade men. Do we know the terror of the Lord? Do we know the terror of the Lord? We need to. If we don't know the terror of the Lord, we need to. Hallelujah. We need to know the law of God before we can know the grace of God. Amen. Will you bind together with me and ask the Lord for a revelation of the terror of the Lord? To know the fear of God, that we might be wise on the earth and not foolish and not stupid, but that we might be wise, that we might know the wisdom of God because we know the fear of God. You know, we would live different. We would walk different if we knew the terror of the Lord, if we knew the fear of God. I've seen that word fear watered down so much. But yet you look it up in the Greek and it means phobia. It means terror. Can it get any worse? Can it be any worse? Our God is a consuming fire. He's a terror. He is a terror, people. If you think Islam is terrorism, if you think that the terrorists that are on the earth right now is terror, 
you haven't met God yet. You haven't met the God of the Bible because he's a terror. Amen? But thank God he's not just terror. Thank God he's not just all law. Amen? But he is mercy. He is grace. And God is love. Hallelujah. He is love. Praise God. We need to run to him. Run into him. Hallelujah. While there's time. While we have time, let's run. Run into the Lord. And that you might be safe in this hour. Amen. Hallelujah. There is salvation. There is deliverance. There is salvation in the Lord, people. Salvation is not just accepting Jesus as your Savior and just going about your day and doing your thing. No, salvation is running into the Lord to be safe from His judgment. Safe from all, uh, all, anything that could come, any calamity, anything that could come your way to destroy. God is able to protect. God is able to keep you. God is able to save you. Hallelujah. That is salvation, friend. Salvation is more than just being saved and going to heaven at the end of this thing. Salvation is life in Christ. It's being saved from all calamities. The Lord can protect us on the road. The Lord can protect us from uh, danger, uh, maybe a car accident, whatever. He can protect us. He can keep us from being destroyed. In this life, not just destroyed as far as our soul being destroyed in hell, but also being destroyed in our physical body. There's a lot of God's people that are dying in this hour. A lot of people that are going to the graveyard. And it seems like they're falling like flies. But I'm here to tell you that there's a reason why. God never wills that his people uh, die the physical death and go to the graveyard. That's not God's will. Jesus said, He that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. And he said, I am the resurrection and the life. I know a man right now, not going to say his name, but I'll tell you, his whole body was full of cancer. Totally full of cancer to the point where the doctors that cornered him in a restaurant said to him, You don't even have any electrolytes in your eyes, Henry. You don't even have any electrolytes. You should be dead. And right now, today, he's completely free of cancer. He beat cancer, praise God. His wife beat cancer. You're telling me that we don't serve a God that is able? Amen. He should be dead. But he's alive, praise God, because he put his trust in the Lord. Amen. The Lord is able to deliver us. Don't tell me God is not able. He is able, praise the Lord. He's the God of the living. He's not the God of the dead. He's the God of the living. Praise God. But when you see your brothers and sisters in the Lord, and you see them going to the graveyard, I don't know about you, but that makes me angry. That makes me mad. Because I know that they're more useful on this planet than they are in the grave. Amen? But I'm here to tell you today that God is willing that none should go that way. There's no reason why we should go the way of the graveyard. No reason, ever, ever, no reason to ever go the way of the graveyard. Yeah, I've even heard people that talk about the rapture, one side of their mouth, the other side of their mouth, they're talking about going to the graveyard. Which is it, brother, sister? Are you going to the graveyard or are you going to be raptured? We're living in an hour when even the church doesn't believe in the rapture anymore. That's right. They don't even believe in the rapture, a lot of them. Looking for the graveyard. Well, what happened to being raptured? What happened to being uh, delivered out of this world? Don't you believe at the last trump there's going to be a caught up? Are the people going to be caught up? There's going to be a rapture? Don't you believe that anymore? Yet I show you a better way. Some are going to get out of here even before the rapture. Some are going to be translated to the throne of God. Some are going to be translated before the church is even raptured. I'm here to tell you today, brothers and sisters, that God is the God of the living. He's not the God of the dead. 
the world glorifies death. Those that disobey God, those that hate God, love death. You and I must understand that death is the final enemy, that we are to overcome death. Amen? The scripture says, uh, O death, where is your sting? And, and where is your, uh, O grave, where is your victory? Amen? Because of Jesus Christ, not one of us that put our trust in the Lord should be looking for the graveyard. And I didn't plan to give this message today. God is speaking to us. He's helping us to understand it's never been His plan, never been His will, that anybody go the way of the graveyard. That's the way you go when you don't believe God. That's the way you go when you don't put your trust in God. He is able to raise us up. He's able to raise up, amen, those that are sick in their bodies. The Lord is able to deliver those that are cancer, uh, full of cancer. God is able to deliver you. If you'll put your trust in Him. Hallelujah. He is the God of the living. He is the God of miracles. He still works miracles. Today, brothers and sisters, God hasn't changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Praise God. He's still raising the dead. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Even better than that, He'll keep you alive. You don't have to die and be resurrected. You can stay alive, amen? You can stay alive in this hour. You don't have to die spiritually. You can live, praise God. You can live because He lives. You can live. Hallelujah. He's the God of the living, not the God of the dead. Hallelujah. Praise your holy name, Lord. We thank you, Lord, right now for the power of the Holy Ghost. We thank you for life, Lord, and life more abundantly. We thank you, Lord, that you're the God of the living and not the God of the dead. We thank you, Lord, that we can overcome death, hell, and the grave by the power of the Holy Ghost and through the blood of the Lamb, Lord. Your word is true. You came to bring salvation to your people. Salvation, total salvation, complete salvation, Lord. Hallelujah. Not just so that we can accept you as our Savior and go to heaven when we leave this world, but experiencing full salvation today, full and complete salvation, full and complete deliverance today, walking in the Spirit and not in the flesh. We can live victorious. We can live overcoming lives today by the power of the Holy Ghost. We don't have to live pauper lives. We don't have to live mediocre lives. We don't have to be the run of the mill. We can be warriors for Christ and walk as mighty men of God and women of God. We can walk in power of the Holy Ghost if we'll put our trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is not limited. It's we that are limited. God is unlimited in power. God is unlimited in wisdom. God is unlimited in knowledge. God is unlimited in every area. Everything we have need of is in in the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Everything we have need of is in Him. He's all we need, brothers and sisters. We don't need man. We don't need the government. We don't need the government's help. We don't need welfare. We need God. We need God, folks. He is able that even as the world is troubled and worried about how they're going to eat, God is able to fill our cupboards supernaturally. Are you ready to believe the Lord in this hour? Or are you going to be like the world and be uh, sad of countenance and and? Are you going to be troubled and worried and how are you going to pay your bills and how are you going to fill the, 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 the cabinets with food and how are you going to feed your children and all these things that the world worries about. Jesus said the world worries about those things. He said you're not supposed to worry about those things. Consider the lilies. Consider the lilies how they grow. Consider the lilies. They don't toil. They don't spin. Consider the lilies. Anybody out there listening? Consider the lilies, how they grow. Hallelujah. Lord doesn't want you and I worried, troubled, fretting. How are we going to pay our bills? How are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? He said the heathen worry about those things. 
The heathen worries about those things. You and I are not supposed to be like the heathen. Amen. Praise God. Seek first the kingdom of God in His righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. If you're going without today, it's because you're not believing God. If you're failing in this hour, if you're, if you're in any way lacking, it's not God's fault. It's not God's fault. You lack faith. You lack faith. If you are in any measure lacking in any area of your life, it's because you lack faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Enoch walked with God. He was not, for God took him. He had this testimony, that he pleased God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Amen. Lord, increase our faith. Increase our faith. Hallelujah. We don't need God to increase Our faith needs to increase. Amen. God doesn't need to get any bigger. Our faith needs to get bigger. Amen. He's able. He is able to do exceeding, abundant, above all we could ever ask or think. He is able. Hallelujah. What he's promised, he's well able to perform. Don't put your trust in the things of this world. Do not put your trust in the things of this world. Put your trust in the Lord. Amen. Put your trust in Jesus. Hallelujah. We know dark dark days are ahead. We know the storm is just up ahead. We know that troubled, very bad, dark times are coming. But that should not move us. That should not trouble us. Amen, brothers and sisters. We are in the will of God. Safest place you could be. In the will of God is the safest place you could be. Abiding in Him. Abiding in Him. Living in Him. In Him we move. In Him we move. We live. In Him we have our being. In Him. Amen? If any man be in Christ, we need to be in Him. In Him we live, we move, we have our being. Don't move without God. Did you hear what I said? Don't move without God. Don't expect the Lord to follow you around. He didn't say, I'll follow you. He said, follow me. Follow me. He knows the way, people. He knows what he's doing. We need to get behind him and follow him. Amen? He knows what he's doing. The world is confused. People are confused. But the Lord knows what He's doing. Yes, He does. He knows what He's doing. I love that. I love that. The Lord knows. He knows His people. He knows what He is doing. He's in full, total, complete control. Do you believe that? Do you believe the Lord's in control? Do you believe right now as the stock market is in free fall that Jesus Christ is in control? When you hear uh, all the calamities and things that are coming upon the earth, do you believe that Jesus Christ is in control? He is. He's in total, complete control. Hallelujah. The question is, is He in control of your life? You have to turn your life over to Him. You have to surrender the reins to Him. Is he in control of your life? Have you surrendered to him? Are you surrendered to his lordship? Hallelujah. Is he all in all? Is Jesus Christ all in all in your life? Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. I praise your holy name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. The Lord knows the way through the wilderness. 
All I have to do is follow. The Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All I have to do is follow. Amen. God bless you.